can the Blue Jackets get back in the win column against Calgary tonight? Will it be an Eric Branson revenge game? And are Patrick Laine's comments after practice this morning accurate, or is he just feeling sorry for himself? We're going to talk about all of that and more on today's Locked on Blue Jackets. Your Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Jay Foster, back from my brief absence yesterday. Uh, with me is my co-host, Hayden Hailson, who has been doing a lot of heavy lifting over the past couple of weeks. So shout out to him. Uh, we're here to give you the good, the bad and the ugly about your favorite team and ours, the Columbus Blue Jackets, uh, who have not been in action since Monday. So it's been been a little while here. Uh, before we before we get started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen of the day every day. Locked on Blue Jackets continues to be free and available on all podcast platforms, over on YouTube and on Sirius XM. Uh, now, Blue Jackets are going to be facing the Calgary Flames, who I believe they went one and one with against uh, last season. There was not a Johnny Hockey revenge game in Calgary, I don't believe. Uh, so I guess let's let's start off with. They got bag skated at practice um, on Wednesday, I believe it. I believe the day was. Do you think we're going to get a response out of that, Hayden? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I think honestly, the team definitely feels embarrassed based off how they performed at home on Monday, and it's kind of it's actually came at a great time to get their butts beat because they had a kind of like pseudo, you know, bye week here where they just had three days to just sit at home and just think about the fact that they just got shut out uh, for the eighth time in 365 days. And it was kind of like, oh, here are the same old Blue Jackets again. And I really think that the idea that this whole season already could be down the tank and end up exactly like uh, last year, I think that kind of either scared the Blue Jackets or just motivates, should motivate them enough to just reset things, go into this game against the Flames, know that they can beat this Flames team, who, looking at their stats, like even though they didn't get results really in their first two games on the road to start the season, they started on the road in Pittsburgh and in, uh, well, they started at home against the Jets, but they're on a little kind of East Coast trip here where they played the Penguins, the Capitals. Tonight, as we're recording, they're playing the Sabres and they're playing the Jackets. Like I feel like the Jackets have a, a good chance to bounce on this team that's playing on the road a bunch of games in a row. Um, they're going to come in hungry, the Flames are. So it's like it should be a really good game. Um, and if the Blue Jackets are able to beat them, then all the momentum is back. Like I feel like at this point in uh, the season, you can just kind of just – hopefully, hopefully they're – you know, wise enough, smart enough to just put that one behind them and focus on the other 79 games that they have ahead of them and be like, it's not too late to resurrect this thing. Like, it was just one bad game where they had a bunch of penalties. James Reimer played nuts. Forget about all the bad that happened and just move on. But I don't know, Jay. We didn't didn't get to hear your thoughts yesterday as we had a couple more days to kind of sit and think about it. But where where are your thoughts on just that loss where the Jackets are at through one week of the season. I am interested that Pascal Vincent has not changed things up a little more than he did. Um, I believe Jack Roslovic is drawing back in, um, and I believe somebody else will be sitting. Um, I don't remember who off the top of my head, but they're really just kind of changing up that bottom, that fourth line. The defense pairings are staying the same, which seems questionable. Uh, that boquist Severson pairing was not good. Um, but I guess we'll see. Like, I, I think this game feels really important because I feel like a lot of times last season, I spent so long on this show talking about, well, they played really badly last season. Are we going to get a response? Oh, they played, sorry, excuse me. They played really badly last game. Are we going to get it? Are we going to see a response 
the next game? And the answer generally was no. They might win the game, but it was not the kind of response that I wanted. So I think this first period against the Flames is going to be really, really important. The Flames, as of recording, as of time recording, like you said, they're playing uh, the Buffalo Sabres at the minute. They are up one nothing, I believe, against them um, as, as of the time of recording this. So we don't know what the result is going to be. Uh, they beat the Jets 5-3 lost to the Penguins 5-2, and then lost to Washington in a shootout, uh, giving up a 2-0 lead after the first period. So they're not not—they're probably going to be stronger than last season. Um, I think they got rid of some of the dead weight uh, that they had hanging around last season. They they haven't really added anyone. Um, I'm expecting Mackenzie Wieger to continue to be good. I'm expecting Jonathan Huberdeau to uh, have a, better, a bit of a better season. Um, I'm a really big fan of Nazem Kadri uh as as a player so hopefully he kind of figures out how to get it going um the blue jackets went like i said they went one and one against the flames last season they won at home uh three to one and then they lost four three in overtime uh in calgary so i feel pretty good about about the blue jackets chances um and i i like it. we didn't really i didn't really get a chance to talk about it on on yesterday's show obviously uh, we had some some power power issues here in the in the mountains um but i i am pleasantly surprised by pascal vincent's response to this because i don't think we saw this at all during brad larson's tenure there was a lot of talk about how they needed to be better but i don't think there was any and correct me if i'm wrong was it, you know, it's been, it's been a long two years. I don't know that I ever saw this kind of reaction from the coach in terms of, yeah, we know we need to be better. So I'm going to skate them until they can't walk anymore. And like, I think bag skates have a time and a place. I'm not a huge fan of them as like a punishment, but the word that Vincent has been using all season is pace. He wanted Kent Johnson to play with more pace. He wants the team to play with more pace. They've had issues with pace, you know? And I think, again, cautiously optimistic is is the buzzword of the kind of the first week of the season for me um i know a lot of people are already ready to write them off uh they've been fine to start the season one and two is not terrible you know uh long time blue jackets fans will remember that season they started zero and eight you know it, it can always get worse um a lot of other teams that have been poor this to start the season are teams that I fully expect to bounce back, you know, and then there's teams like Anaheim that I believe are unbeaten so far. Um, again, as of the time of recording this, I believe they played tonight, but I don't remember who they're playing. Um, you know, so it's, it's three games into it. Calm down. Um, we got, we got a really fun, uh, comment. I'm going to pull the, the YouTube comment up for a second. Cause I did enjoy it. Um, where was it? Yeah, as you look for that, I'll just add on here to that. Uh, Pascal Vincent definitely seems to be taking this losing streak, which is not really a losing streak, but lost two of the first three games, mm-hmm. which you started at home. Games that you probably feel like you should win. You know, they should have beaten right. the Flyers. They probably should have beaten the Red Wings. But I also be- would have understood if they lost to the Rangers, you know? So, like, it's yeah. been a really weird season of, oh, they beat that one team that I was not expecting them to beat. So... Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Pascal Vincent, though, he's like he's he's embodying kind of the frustration of the fans, yeah. which, you know, last year or, you know, that was kind of Torts, right? That was Torts' this thing. Torts was the angry coach. He was the guy who would never endorse this today. But uh, in hindsight, probably shouldn't have had a guy like Torts in the room throwing stuff at players. He did do that. There's stories out there that he threw stuff at Sergei Bobrovsky at one point. But um, like he's not that level of mad. He's a calm. He's like a much the more just like mature version of mad. Like exactly how we would react as the fans if we were the coach. Like yeah, just bag skate him. You don't have to you know run him to the ground like like the movie Miracle. But uh, you know just make practices a little more intense. You know like come on like that game was was pathetic. I don't know if it was necessarily an effort issue. I will say if if it was an effort issue, it was on the forwards. I thought the forwards Mm -hmm. were atrocious in that red. Yeah. Yeah. I thought they were so bad, but um, yeah, I think if anything, if anybody needs to be bag skate, it's, it's the forwards because Mm -hmm. I I felt like they didn't do 
a good enough job establishing possession, causing chaos for the Red Wings in their own D zone and letting the Blue Jackets defensemen get set up because the Blue Jackets have some snipers back there on the blue line, even when they don't have Zach Kerensky. You know, they still got Jake Bean. They still got Adam Boquist, Damon Severson. Like, see what he can do. Uh, I'm sure Provorov can throw some pucks on that. Like, they need to get set up in the offensive zone and let those guys cook. And it just felt like that didn't happen at all on Monday night. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we're going to take a quick break in a second. Um, I will very quickly uh, shout out to Larry Gilpin on on YouTube, uh, who says, uh, I know we all love our Blue Jackets. We want to see them win. And when they don't uh, win, at least put on a good show. But breathe. You have to get that blood pressure down. It's only game three of the season. I was laughing when you said it was the worst game they played all season. I'm thinking, well, that wasn't too hard. We've only played three games. Like... And I feel like it's, it's, I get it completely overreaction on, I think that was probably a, a, my comment. Uh, I got real heated on Tuesday's episode, but in my defense, I felt like it was justified ranting. Um, yes, it is only, two, it is only three games into the season. We do need to collectively calm down. I think um, I've seen some, I've seen some takes out on Twitter. I've made some takes out on Twitter, but it's fine. If this, if if we're still having this conversation in like a month's time, then yeah, I think there's probably something to worry about. But I liked the response, um, and I also want to. You talked about Pascal Vincent being like a more mature version of John Tortorella. Uh, that's a really interesting thought, and I want to get into that a little bit more. Uh, but first, I want to tell you guys uh, about one of our sponsors. Everybody loves bird dogs. That's not hyperbole. Um, they're just, they're so good. They are, I'll tell you what they are. They are um, short, they do sweatpants, they do khakis, uh, but they're made of this like really cool stretchy material that looks like formal khaki, but is actually just the most comfortable thing you're ever going to put on your body. And again, like that's not exaggeration. That's not me saying this because they're a sponsor. Like I'm actively angry about how comfortable these shorts are because they have ruined every other pair of shorts I own for me. Um, they're great. They're so good. You can wear them basically anywhere. Um, I wore them to the Sharks game last week. I've worn them lying around the house. I, if I go on a walk, if we go to dinner, like I have worn my bird dogs in all of these situations. I'm wearing my bird dogs right now. Uh, they look good. They feel great. Uh, they are just the best shorts I own. Um, and if you go to birddogs.com, you can get your own pair of bird dog shorts, sweatpants, khakis. I think they have swim trunks as well, which is really cool. Uh, and if you enter promo code locked on NHL at checkout, you're going to get a free bird dog's water bottle with your order. And you know me, you know I love a travel mug, a reusable water bottle. I love to stay hydrated. Uh, I have like three water glasses gathered around me right now. Uh, so birddogs.com slash locked on NHL for a free bird dog's water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. All right, Hayden, let's, let, I want to talk more about the Flames, but I also want to talk a little bit about a couple of, uh, I want to talk about Patrick Laine's comments to the media yesterday morning after practice. But first, I want to kind of dig a little bit more into that comment that you made about Pascal Vincent as a coach, because when Mike Babcock was hired, there was a lot of conversation about the power of positivity in coaching. Um, and there was a really, really great article by Emily Kaplan, who works for ESPN, talking about the power of positive coaching and kind of its impact on the Stanley Cup playoffs. And there was a really great quote from Pascal Vincent in there about Paul Maurice, who is apparently big for, you know, um, positive coaching and encouragement over um, not punishment, but like if you say, OK, so you didn't do the, this thing great, but here's how you fix it. Instead of just being like, you suck, do this better, you know? Um, and so there's a, a really great quote from Pascal Vincent, who was Paul Maurice's assistant coach in Winnipeg. We realized that we were getting results and seeing more success when we were showing more positive clips of things that teams do well, as opposed to things that they do badly. Uh, of course, there are many other variables, but that's what the data said. I've done a lot of reading on the topic across other walks of life, and it confirmed what I was feeling. This came out around, this article came out around about the time that Babcock was confirmed as the coach. And I remember thinking, man. We could have had someone like Pascal Vincent who says this, and instead we've got Mike Babcock, who, say what you like about his coaching style, I don't think you could ever call it positive. I'm not saying that he didn't get results, but I am saying that he has a way about him that is not, strictly speaking, um, encouragement-based. 
let's say. He's so, not known for that, no. <laughs> he's not super known for being like, hey, guys, I believe in you. We can all do better, you know? Um, and I like that a lot from Pascal Vincent. I like what I've seen from him so far. Um, he he holds himself extremely well on, on the podium. I think he's a very good um, quote. He, he seems to hold up well in interviews. Um, he, he, he is impressed a lot, despite the fact that the results on the ice haven't been great. And I do have some questions about like his lineup decisions, um, his, uh, like, um, what's the word I want? Line matches, I guess. And um, we're still seeing way more of Sean Corrali than I thought we would, because we know that Brad Larson loved Sean Corrali. But I will say that has been that has been much improved now that he seems to have broken up the Robinson Corrali Olivier line, which was brutal last season. But for the most part, I have liked Pascal Vincent's response to these losses, and I am expecting I am expecting a change against the Flames um, because even in the win, I don't think they played very well, and I think Vincent knows that as well. Um, but I wanted to kind of touch very briefly on something Patrick Line said in uh, after practice this morning i don't know who asked the question um but i am on aaron port's lines twitter um got asked about basically patrick line got asked about how do you feel like your season has gone so far um patrick line said i feel like overall it's been pretty awful pretty awful so far can't hit the net if my life depends on it can't make any plays can't win a face off just basically can't do anything right now that's why we're here working on it and trying to get better Everybody tries to work on these, work on stuff they need to work on. Right now, for 2-9, uh, there's a lot of work. That's why we're here, trying to figure it out, trying to be better. Good thing it's a long season. And I just wanted to kind of bring that up, because for my money, I thought Patrick Lyme had been one of the better players to start the season. So it's really interesting to see him be like, no, that's terrible. I can do better. Um, I thought that was I thought that was really interesting. Um, he has, I believe, one goal and I think an assist. Um, I'm just going to pull that up so so I have that. But how do you feel about Patrick Lyonet's comments? Because he kind of is like this. Sometimes I feel like he does get into these moods where like he's like, no, everything is terrible. I'm the worst player in the world when he's like been fine. Uh, yes, he has two points on the season. Um, one goal, one assist. So how do you how do you feel about Patrick Lyonet thus far this season, Hayden? Yeah, first of all, you're absolutely right. Patrick Lyonet, he's known to just be blunt on how he feels about how he's playing, how the team's playing. First of all, before any of this, I love the fact that he just talks in the third person and just says, <laughs> right. know, for 2-9, <laughs> things aren't good right now. That's awesome. But you remember he did this last year, Jay, right after the Global Series games when the Blue Jackets got waxed 6-3 and then 5-1. Sorry to bring up those memories for anybody that happened to watch those games or traveled over to Finland to watch the Blue Jackets get, you know, pantsed by the avalanche. Patrick Lane just straight up said after playing in his hometown, that was a waste of time. I wish we wouldn't had a wish we wish we wouldn't had a gone. Like I wish it wouldn't have happened, basically. Like I'm paraphrasing what he said, but the dude was mad after the Global Series games. He felt that he felt embarrassed. And he went on to have 10 points in the next eight games after that. So when this dude goes through these moments like he he is you're absolutely right he hasn't been his best but neither has the whole team and like i'm ne I'm never the one to like blame patrick line like it's never going to be as bad as it was in winnipeg for me with him because in winnipeg there were just moments where he just seemed completely disinterested in the game of hockey we know that that was just a terrible situation going on between him and the team over there and just like he just had a lot of animosity between him and, you know, some veteran NHL players. And he was just like a 20 year old at the time. But here in Columbus, he's a leader. He's obviously well liked by the the team, by his teammates, by the coaching staff, by the fans. So to see him kind of go back to his old ways in the sense where he's like, I'm not playing good enough. Like, that's just a leader right there, man. That's just that's a kid that's 25 years old. That's not it. That's not acting like a kid. He's acting like a man. He's taking responsibility. The team getting crushed by the Red Wings at home. And I think he's he's taking it personally. And I and I love that. The fans love that. And I can guarantee you he's gonna come out against this against the Calgary Flames and probably have two goals. Probably have three goals. 
uh, tonight against the Flames. Like he he turns it on when he needs to turn it on. Um, he was a point a game player last year. He's going to be the same thing this year as long as he stays healthy. Uh, the one thing that's really hurting him right now, like the one area that I think every single fan will agree, like he's not doing well in, it's, it's the face-off circle. And like he's just playing center for what, his sixth, seventh game ever? Uh, realistically, it's you're not gonna... his sixth regular season game at center ever. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, everybody's willing to be a little patient with him in that area. Now he did. I think he did talk about how he hasn't hit the net. Um, he's right. He actually, uh, he's been shooting. He just has not been hitting the net. Um, I, I know this because I had a personal, I had a bet on him the other night to have three plus shots on goal. I think he ended up with two shots on goal, but he mm-hmm. took like five or six shot attempts. So he's absolutely right. Um, that's something that's easily correctable though. Like it's only game three. Um, so I guess it, Blue Jackets fans should be excited when they hear that version of Patrick Line going to the media instead of like kind of moping and being like, why are you asking me these questions? Which we definitely know NHL players will tend to do. Like, like, who are you to ask me that question right now? He's straight up taking responsibility, and I love that. It's the sign of a leader. Right. One more thing. So I just wanted to uh, – I pulled some stats. Uh, he has um... – where is it? I've lost it. That's fine. Um, <laughs> it's fine. I'm doing great over here. Uh, he has got eight shots so far on the season in three games. So, you know, he's averaging just under three shots a game, which is uh, pretty... I feel fine about that. Um Definitely could be a little better, but I'm not worried about that. Um, he has been on the ice for 61 shot attempts in total so far this season at all strengths. Um, and I also wanted to pull up his uh, shooting percentage. Uh, he's His career shooting percentage is about 15%. Currently, he's shooting at 12.5. So he's a little under. I would expect that to, to flatten out um, and for him to you know start getting a couple of goals. Um, I also wanted to just kind of mention this is not to do with his game or anything, uh, but he, he it was announced today that for every point he scores this season, he's going to be donating $1,000 to a um, charity that supports men's mental health, which is a really great thing. And I feel like he did a similar thing last season where he was like, I'm going to donate $1,000 for every goal I score to like a children's hospital. So like, how can you not like this guy, man? He's he's great. He's got a great personality. He's fun. He's good at hockey. Seems like a relatively good person. Is probably going to be giving upwards of 50k to charity this season. Like, you gotta love Patrick Line. Um, in a minute, we're gonna talk about how the Blue Jackets can beat the Flames, some keys to victory, and we'll get into our predictions as well. That's all coming up in just one second. First, though, I've got to tell you guys about Sleeper, because if you think that Patrick Lyon is going to score a hat trick, Sleeper is the place to go for that. If you want to win 100 times your money, you can play Daily Fantasy Hockey on the Sleeper app, and you can win big. They are the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. They are our top choice for Daily Fantasy Sports, and especially Daily Fantasy Hockey. And, like I said, you can win 100 times your cash. All you have to do is pick more or less on stats for starts. So if you think Patrick Laine is going to get three goals, or if you think he's going to get more than two goals, you could win 100 times your money if he scores two or more, which is, if you put five bucks on that, uh, you're going to win 100 times your money, which is not great at math, but I think that's 500 bucks, which is pretty darn good if you ask me. Use promo code locked on NHL. You're going to get a what up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That is locked on NHL. L O C K E D O N NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details. All right, Hayden, what do the Blue Jackets need to do to win this game apart from score a goal? Score literally any goal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they they need to score a goal. They need to score a goal. Um, I, I bet goal, that they. But... <laughs> yes, they're they're gonna they're gonna score goals tomorrow night or tonight. And um, I'll tell you what, the Flames. It kind of sucks that they're playing the Flames right now because the Blue Jackets are bottom four as a team in faceoff percentage, 
and the Flames are top three as a team in faceoff percentage. They have tons of experience there with uh, Elias Lindholm, Nazem Kadri, Jonathan Huberdeau takes some faceoffs, Mike Mikhail back. These guys are nuts pros that have been dominating uh, the center position for years. So that's going to be a huge issue for the young centers tomorrow night. And um, I, I, the Blue Jackets are going to just simply have to play better in that area. Um, and if they're not, then they need to stay out of the penalty box because the Flames are 12th in the NHL right now in uh, power play percentage. And, um, you know, the, the Flames are also very good on the penalty kill as well. In fact, they are one of eight teams right now that have yet to give up a power play goal. Uh, they're playing a 2-1 game right now with the Sabres. They're in the first period. They lead that game. So that obviously could change tonight. But this team is a good team. They are solid. I will say from watching them play Pittsburgh a little bit and then watching a little bit of the Capitals game, they tend to get flat-footed. They don't look like the quickest team on ice. So if the Blue Jackets can just come out and play with that speed, with the guys that we know are fast, like Kirill Marchenko, you know, Johnny Gaudreau, Boone Jenner even has a lot of mm -hmm. speed. Like if they can get these guys, Cole Sillinger, if they can get these guys moving, get their legs churning, and uh, just make more of a presence in the offensive zone. Like Alexander Texier, who had an amazing preseason. Like he was doing things in the preseason. We were like, who is this? Who is this guy? This is a completely new player. He went to France, got completely reworked. They sent him back here. We got this brand new weapon. And he hasn't really done anything the first three games, it feels like. It feels like uh, Friday night, he needs to get his legs going a lot more. I feel like the Blue Jackets should be able to handle this Flames team pretty easily, honestly. Like, it just felt like at times last year, even last year, where, let me remind you, the Blue Jackets had the third overall pick because they were garbage. They still had games where they were just just flying into through the neutral zone in the offensive zone, dominating possession. And like they would lose a game five to four or something like that, but they would still put four goals up. So the blue jackets just need to get back to their quick possess, like good possession on offense. They just, they need to be better in the O zone basically is what I'm getting at. I feel like whoever the goalie is going to be tomorrow night, Spencer Martin, who, he had a bad game uh, against the Red Wings, but he went on again. He was on the, he was a man down for a huge chunk of that second period, which is where the Red Wings scored three goals. So I feel like that needs to be cleaned up, and it will be cleaned up. There is absolutely no way the Jackets are going to have seven penalties again on Friday night, and if they do, then I'm just going to have to go be a fan of a new team because I cannot root for a team that's going to continually put four guys on the ice. So just I said a lot there, but. The big thing is, is just be better on offense. Like, just take – like, Pascal Vincent has been working the Blue Jackets this week on one-on-one -on -one battles. Yeah, just – you don't have to win one-on-one -on -one battles, but just put up a little bit more of a fight so that you can get more of your guys into the O-zone and just create possession. But um, that's what I have. I know I said a million things there. I'm sure there's something there that you would bounce off of or maybe add. So, what I mean – I don't know, Jay. How do the Blue Jackets beat the Calgary Flames tonight? Yeah, special teams was definitely something I looked at. The Blue Jackets are currently, I think, 22nd in the league on the power play and 25th in the league on the penalty kill. So, like, one of those has got to get better. Ideally, both, but I would take one at this point. Um, like you said, the Flames haven't allowed a, uh, a uh, power play goal yet, so that's definitely something to keep an eye on. The Blue Jackets can get that power play clicking, then they're going to be a very interesting team to watch. Uh, and I also wanted to highlight goaltending. Um, Elvis Moslikens will be back. Uh, he currently has a 950 save percentage, I believe. Uh, yep, a 950 save percentage. He only played like the first game and then two periods of the second game. So small sample size, obviously, but encouraging early returns on elvis's season so they need good goaltending they need good special teams um and yeah i agree the offense needs to needs to show up um let's uh let's do some predictions um i already i did mine earlier i was i was having to think about it um so i will i will go first if that's all right um i'm gonna go a 3-2 blue jackets win in overtime uh and i'm gonna say that johnny gaudreau gets a goal johnny gaudreau is the first goal scorer i think that's that's my prediction
Okay. Okay. You usually take you usually take Patrick Line. So because you're gonna leave <laughs> I am him out I am on a you know I took Patrick Line for the two comments that he had so far this season, so I'm going to take my opportunity to take two nine and put him on my squad tonight. So I'm gonna have twenty nine gets the first goal for Columbus and they get a 4-2 win. It's going to be close at the end, but I think uh, the Blue Jackets are going to get an empty net goal, and uh, Nationwide is going to feel like Nationwide Arena again because, like I said, it was Joe Louis Arena South uh, on Monday night, and uh, the like the players just – hopefully they just can get a good crowd on hand tonight and just completely forget about it. Usually a Friday night crowd is obviously going to do a lot better in Columbus than a Monday night crowd. No doubt about that. That was also the only time that the Red Wings were playing in Columbus this year. That, that doesn't usually happen. Usually they play in Columbus at least twice. Um, so that makes sense. But yeah, I think it's going to be a good night tonight. I think the vibes are going to be turned around 4-2 win, line A goal. It's a solid, it's a solid prediction. Uh, yeah, four two with an empty netter seems very, very reasonable. I do still find it comical trying to watch the Blue Jackets score in an empty net, but I do believe in them. Uh, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. So just to kind of um, catch everyone up, currently of of a possible six points uh, or a current a possible nine points, excuse me, uh, because you get a bonus point if you get both of them right. I have half a point. Uh, and Hayden has zero points. So we're both doing pretty badly right now. One of us is going to get on the board for real soon. Uh, but we will be back on Monday with another episode. We'll break down the Flames game. And I believe the Blue Jackets play again this weekend. So we'll have two games to break down. Um, Saturday at Minnesota. Monday at Minnesota. Cool. So we'll yep. break down both of those games on Monday for you. Um, I will be in Columbus that week, which is very exciting. Um so we'll uh, we'll talk about that on Monday. Thank you for listening. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day. Every day, Locked on Blue Jackets continues to be free and available on all podcast platforms. We're over on YouTube. YouTube subscribers keep going up and up and up. So shout out to you guys for that. If you want to become one of our everydayers, then uh, hit the subscribe button uh, wherever you listen to your podcast or over on YouTube. And you can find us on Sirius XM as well. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. You can find Hayden over at Hayden H971. You can find the show at LO underscore Blue Jackets. If you have comments, questions, criticisms, email us at LockedOnBlueJackets at gmail.com. I think that's all of my outro that I needed to do. Thank you once again for listening. And until Monday, make sure you stay locked on.